The fly that we're going to tie today is called the Fatal Attractor. It's a good all-purpose searching pattern, just a general attractor dry fly. We're going to start off with the Daiichi 1180 dry fly hook in a size 10 or 12. You want to tie this fly fairly large. It's kind of meant to be a fly that gets the fish's attention. And the first thing we're going to start off with is some red Vivas thread in like a 8 aught, 10 aught. Uh, I like to go kind of thin on this fly just because it gets a little bulky near the head of the fly. So you can also use a th real thin thread like a 12 aught or a 14 aught. And then we're going to tie in the tails. For the tails, we're just going to use some red crystal flash, about six eight strands. We're going to tie this right in at the two-thirds point of the shank of the hook. Then we're just going to wrap back down onto it till we get to the bend of the hook. Trim out the butt ends. We want to trim that tail so that it's about the length of the straight portion of our shank. And air a little bit on the longer side because then you can just sneak in here and trim it if you need to shave off a millimeter or two. The next thing that we're going to tie in is going to be the body material. For that, we're just going to use some caddis green ice dub. You can use a little bit of wax to really help tame this stuff. It's pretty difficult stuff to dub just because it's such wiry synthetic fibers. So use a little bit of wax on your fingers. Some guys will apply it directly to the thread. I actually like to apply it to my fingers because that's really what's doing the clumping and spinning of the material. But up to you, whatever you find works best for your technique. And we're just going to dub a little tapered body. I like to start off nice and thin then you kind of generally work your way forward and slowly just kind of build up a gradual taper. Now on this fly you need to leave a little bit of room near the head of the fly. So you don't want to dub all the way to where you started your thread or all the way to the eye. You want to leave a little bit of room for your wing Actually, you're going to have two wings on this fly, so both your wings, you're going to have to leave some room. So just make sure you don't go too far forward. I like to go about two-thirds of the way forward, and then I'll jump my thread in front of that body, and that'll be where we start our first wing. Now, our first wing is going to be made out of deer hair. Now, I've already clumped and stacked this deer hair in my stacker. What that does is it gets the tips nice and even. If you've got a few strays in there, you can just pluck them out with your fingernail. There we go. And I like to measure out the deer hair first onto the body and then trim it and then tie it in. But you can tie it in with the butt ends longer. It's just a little more difficult to get in there and trim them and try to tame them. So I'm going to measure out my deer hair so that it reaches back about a third of the way over the tail. Then I'm going to sneak in my scissors and I'm just going to trim it to the length that I want. Then I can come in here with a nice loose wrap of thread, grab that whole clump, and then just bite down through all those fibers. You can see I'm actually going through the clumps in a few different places. That's going to keep it from spinning and rotating and I've done all this without letting go then you can let go and if it's a little too long you know I made mine too long just pinch it back it out and just give it another trim you could say I did that on purpose for demonstration purposes but not not really a lot of times I don't measure correctly so let's try that again That's a little better. A 
And if you have a few little stray pat or stray fibers, just get in there, trim them out. And you can see that's a little cleaner, easier way to tie them in rather than having that big mangled mess flare out all over your hook shank and then you got to go in there and clean it up. So just a little quicker, easier way to tame a deer hair wing. And some guys will even come in here and sneak a wrap in underneath and behind it to help kind of further flare and tame that deer hair. That just helps keep it up off the body and flare it up so it looks like a fluttering mayfly. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tie in our second wing. And for this, you can use a few different things. We're just going to use some like poly yarn. It's kind of like EP fiber. You can use that if you have laying around. Um, McFly lawn works as well. Z lawn, Antron. We're just looking for a white synthetic wing. And I'm just going to take this and I'm going to tie this in in a figure eight X pattern right at the bottom of the ramp where we tied in that deer hair. And you want to make sure that you get it nice and secure. Then I'm going to raise it up and I'm going to do a wrap around all of it. Trying to dodge some of that deer hair fiber. Then we'll do another X pattern. And then I'm actually going to go around that post just a couple of times. Try to dodge your deer hair again. It takes a few hands, sometimes a bodkin or a whip finisher to get in there and pull those fibers out of the way. And I like to do two wraps around that post. And then we'll do two wraps around this other post. And if any deer hair got trapped, we've got plenty of fibers to spare. So just pull them out of the way. Same with any of these synthetic fibers. Got any short ones or loose ones, just trim them. Trim them out of there, get them out of the way. There's another one. They honestly don't really matter. The fish don't care, but sometimes it bothers me. All right, now we can just kind of separate that poly wing from our deer hair, jump our thread back here, build up a little bit more of an even ramp so that when we tie our hackle, it doesn't all just kind of slide forward and jam up the head of the fly. So a little smooth ramp there. That looks pretty good. Then we can take our hackle and tie it in. I'm going to use two Grizzly Whiting Hackle Fibers. These are from a high and dry cape. We're just going to tie these in so that the fibers swoop rearward. Try to get them as even as possible. to use several really tight wraps to secure them and sneak in there with your scissors, cover up those butt ends, and then jump your thread to the front of the fly here. Now we're going to take both these hackle fibers and we're going to wrap them at the same time. This will give us a nice dense wing. I like this fly to really ride high, so I'm looking for kind of an extra dense wing or hackle I should say. Then when we wrap our wraps behind our wing we can jump it in front of trying to not trap any fibers if you can get away with it.
there we go. Generally, I can only squeeze a couple of wraps in in front of our poly wing. And sneak in there with your thread. And trim out the tips of those hackles. Now I like to leave these poly wings long when we're doing the hackle just so it gives me something to grab onto and manipulate. If you cut them before you do all the hackle then they kind of get lost and they're a lot harder to control with your fingers. And to whip finish I like to pull back all those fibers and whip finish right in front of the eye. Now when we trim our wing, I like to draw it all up and we're gonna trim it so that it's about even with our caddis wing and taller than our hackle. That's a little bit too long. There we go. You can shape them if you like. But that way, that really stands up and you can see it floating from a long ways away. Kind of acts like a little mini indicator. This fly really fishes well with a dropper down below it as well. I like to fluff up that caddis wing. And that is essentially a finished fatal attractor.